this is one study. Another, another study from uh, Hargrove suggests that uh, it's not worthwhile doing surveillance ultrasound in neurointensive cares. They, they, they said it routine surveillance did not lead to significantly early DUT diagnosis. So possibly jury is still out and larger trials are uh, required to uh, look at the value of um, surveillance ultrasound in asymptomatic ICU patients. So, of course, it being 2020, we have to talk about COVID. So, multiple papers on VTE in COVID, but one nice um, sort of pooled prevalence looking at all the um, evidence uh, up to this was up to July. So, obviously, there'll be more information since. But at that stage, the overall prevalence of DVT in COVID patients was 16%, but 23% in ICU patients. But there was a huge range. Um, and this, this, this is the, these are the ICU patients, and this is the prevalence of DVT up to 85% in one cohort, 79%, all the way down towards zero. So, so huge variation, big confidence intervals. Um, but obviously VT uh, a problem in COVID patients. And so the, what about the test? What about diagnostic? What about ultrasound as a test? So it's not the gold standard. We tend to think of compression ultrasound or duplex ultrasound as being gold standard, but it's not actually a gold standard test. The gold standard test is venography, but it is uh, in practical, it carries a risk of contrast. It can ca cause DVT itself. So compression ultrasound has been now accepted. There are some uh, units who are doing MRI for DVT diagnosis, but again, very expensive, takes a long time. So really the, the, the practical test is ultrasound. So what about the type of ultrasound? So this is a nice uh, review um, from Good Acres group, and they looked at ultrasound. This is not point of care ultrasound. This is diagnostic ultrasound. So compression ultrasound, 95% uh, sensitive compared to the gold standard venography. Duplex adds about one and a half percent. So that's adding in color. And triplex was actually, didn't add anything uh, in this review. So really compression is the main focus. Um, so in, a, in the emergency, this is emergency medicine literature, which I'm more familiar with. There've been two review, two big reviews on emergency physician performed ultrasound in 2008, 2013, both suggest in very high sensitivities and specificities. But again, like all literature, uh, you've got to drill into it. Apologies for the, the busyness of this slide, but I'll just take Klein as an example. I don't know if you can see, um, but basically Je Jeff Klein, who was one of the authors of the first study. So he, he, he the sensitivity in his study was 70%. Now, the reason for that is because Klein used residents. So uh, first and second year trainees, um, uh, 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 and they were the ones that were performing the ultrasounds versus seven of these papers showed 100% sensitivity and, and some of them had 100% specificity, but these were in trained physicians. So obviously ultrasound is user dependent, point of care ultrasound is user dependent. Um, so I just, a little caveat, beware when interpreting um, figures like this from um, uh, th these kind of reviews, systematic reviews, because they, they, they have significant heterogeneity in the population. This is this, another breakdown of the same. And again, if you look at what these, uh, the studies of point-of-care ultrasound were compared to um, color flow duplex ultrasound, departmental radiology or vascular ultrasound. That's what they were comparing for. And as I've already stated, that is not the gold standard. Two or three of them compared to angiography. So there are flaws in these studies that's important to be aware of. And especially when you're an ultrasound practitioner being aware of your limitations. And then there was a whole debate about two point versus three point ultrasound. And, um, you know, two point being common femoral vein and popliteal vein, three point involving the um, femoral vein, uh, also known as the superficial femoral vein, a word we don't like to use because it's a confusing term because it is a deep vein. So we call it the femoral vein. And, you know, this study showed nicely that 6% of DVTs are outside of these two areas. So really, if you're not going to scan the femoral vein down the vein, down through the vein, if you're just going to look at two areas, you're, you're going to miss something. And that makes perfect sense. If you just look at two parts of the bone, you're going to miss fractures in between. So 
this would this would seem kind of obvious, but there was a there was a lot of talk about that. Um, so the American College of Emergency Physicians have a nice uh, statement and they have a nice algorithm for emergency physicians for, you know, if for diagnosis of DVT in the emergency department using pretest probability and D-dimer score and uh, using point of care ultrasound. And there's always a caveat that if your ultrasound is negative, but your D-dimer is positive, that you get the scan repeated either yourself or in the department. Um, but if the, if the point of care ultrasound is positive, they tend to go ahead and anticoagulate. Um, so what about critical care? So uh, again, I'm honored to be in such a, a group. One of the authors of this um, guideline is, is will be speaking next, Susanna Price. And uh, guidelines for appropriate use of bedside ultrasound in, in, in evaluation of critical care patients. And DVT ultrasound comes out very positively, uh, complete versus focused examination of the lower extremities, recommend a focused ultrasound technique using grayscale imaging to evaluate compression. So basically compression ultrasound at com common femoral and popliteal veins uh, to diagnose most proximal DVTs. And it's good that they say most proximal DVTs because you will miss some in the middle in the down along the femoral vein. And then what about the accuracy of DVT screening by critical care providers? And uh, the recommendation is intensivists can reliably perform a focus screening examination by ultrasound to diagnose DVT. And these come as 1B um, recommendations, strong recommendations with uh, quality of evidence of uh, grade B. So what about learning to do DVT ultrasounds? This is a nice little study where they took uh, intensive care unit doctors performing uh, point of care ultrasound for DVT in the ICU. And they divided them into early groups. So the first 45 scans and the second 45 scans. Um, so, and then the first group, they found the sensitivity um, 71%. And in the second group, the late scan, the second 45 scans had increased to 86%. So there's a learning curve with, with DVT scanning as there is with all point of care ultrasound. This is a really nice study. Um, intensive care physician uh, performed compression ultrasound versus vascular lab ultrasound. And they quoted a sensitivity of 86%. But as with most studies, the, the devil is in the detail. And when you look at the fine print, um, the, there were discordant cases between the intensive care uh, results for DVT and the, um, the, la the vascular studies, the formal vascular studies. And what they found was that when they went back and looked at these nine discordant cases, they found that in four cases of DVT, which were found by the intensive care physician, but not by the vascular lab, the, the radiologist or specialist agreed with the intensive care physician and changed the interpretation to positive. So in this study, they said, they said that the sensitivity of the intensive care physician was 88%. And when you correct it for the uh, discordant cases, which were looked at by somebody else, and then they changed the diagnosis, they said the the sensitivity of the formal vascular scan was 85% less sensitive than the intensive care. So this just highlights how ultrasound is user dependent and how just because you have a negative formal scan doesn't mean it's 100%. And so, you know, another study, exactly the same thing, a more recent study in Australia in Melbourne, high risk trauma patients, 13.6 of them uh, had DVT, Five of these were missed by the ICU doctors performing the scans and four of them were missed by the vascular ultrasound. And again, they did the same thing in the discordant cases. They got an adjudicator in to adjudicate the cases and they changed the diagnosis. And, and they, they made the point in this that basically Doppler ultrasound is not, is, is not the gold standard. And that since the term, if you're comparing Doppler ultrasound, if you're comparing point of care ultrasound to duplex or labart or radiology based or vascular lab based, it's inappropriate to use sensitivity and they should use your Cohen's uh, Kappa um, statistic rather than um, sensitivity. So 
very interesting point. What I liked about this study was that they were very clear about the protocol and they looked at the common femoral vein above the saphenofemoral junction. They looked at the, the confluence of the deep, the profunda, uh, deep femoral vein, and they looked at the femoral vein itself and they compressed uh, every two centimeters along, which is really what I, I think we should be doing. You can just compress in the groin and at the, in, at the back of the knee and you'll you'll pick up most DVTs but really if you want to be a bit more thorough you should really scan all the way down the femoral vein um, it gets a bit difficult in the adductor canal and then into the popliteal vein as far as the tr trifurcation so they described that nicely in that study so this was a consensus report from a group of international radiologists per populist in circulation in 2018 so these are the uh the owners of, uh, the traditional owners, I should say, of ultrasound. And they um, concluded that point of care ultrasound consisted of limited evaluation with compression from thigh to knee is appropriate when comprehensive Doppler ultrasound is not available in a timely manner. And for most of us who work in the real world, comprehensive Doppler ultrasound is not available in, in a timely manner. So, but it's nice to see an endorsement and an acknowledgement of that from an international group of radiologists. Um, by the by, their recommended protocol for DVT diagnosis is a complete scan from groin to ankle, including duplex, just as, as a matter of interest. So just how to do the scan. So most of you, on the, a lot of you on the call, or certainly the panelists will all be familiar uh, with this, but some of you uh, may, may not be familiar with you know, how, to, how to do a scan. So obviously we need to know our anatomy. And, um, but it's really very, very simple. Um, the great saphenous vein is a superficial vein. It's coming up the medial thigh, if you can see, and it joins the common femoral vein here at the saphenofemoral junction. And that is, so one of the theories is that clots form at near a junction. So certainly, you know, we try and look at the saphenofemoral, I always start with saphenofemoral junction, and then I go down and try and find the junction with the deep uh, femoral vein. Um, very hard to scan along the deep femoral vein technically and a very low proportion of clinically significant DVTs are found in this vein. So really it's a matter of scanning down the femoral vein, uh, gets a bit hard down here where it goes behind the knee and then into the popliteal and down to, uh, and we usually just scan at um, level three here, which is a popliteal vein, one, one, two and three common femoral, saphenofemoral junction and and so here's the ideal positioning now in, in, in your ICU patients, you won't maybe be able to get them to move like this, but, you know, sort of patient uh, about at about 30 degrees to allow the vein to fill up. So not lying flat, reverse Trindelenburg position to, to allow the veins to fill up. Um, and if you can do a frog leg, uh, get the patient to sort of um, bend their knee and uh, uh, add, um, abduct externally, rotate a little bit like this. That gives you sort of an optimal per, uh, position. And then you look for Mickey Mouse. And so Mickey Mouse's um, face is the common femoral vein. His, depending on which side you're on, his left ear is the, the long saphenous vein. So essentially it's at the saphenofemoral junction and the artery uh, provides the other ear. So this is just uh, compression at the saphenofemoral junction. So you can see there is the femoral artery on the right of the screen. And then when we, com when we compress, we're compressing the common femoral vein here. And here's the saphenous, long saphenous vein entering into the, joining the common femoral vein. And it's nice to get a good, complete compression, complete effacement. And that, that is compression, understand. It is very simple. It's very basic. It's not complex. It's not like echo. It's very easy to do, especially in a patient with um, a, a low BMI. And this is what it looks like when there is a clot, when it doesn't compress. Um, you can see the artery, the femoral artery is here. And you can see the femoral vein here. It's being compressed, but it's not fully compressible because there's this, you can see this echogenic material here, which is clot, which is not compressing. So essentially absence of clot um, if it allows full compression and that um, allows you to say there isn't a DVT at that particular point. And there's just an example of another big thrombus mm -hmm. in the femoral vein and the femoral artery beside it. 
here's these clips that are normally saved on your pack system because people don't normally save uh, dynamic images so it's good to go and look at your patient's scans so the, this is um femoral artery on top femoral vein below and they will then do a, a compression image so you'll have the image without compression on the left of the screen and the image with compression, you can see the femoral vein disappears completely and there's no DVT at that point. And this is just a little video to show you. Uh, you, you start in the groin, I like to scan all the way down, uh, compressing as I'm going down the femoral vein for as far as I can see. And then usually just need to use a two-handed technique uh, when you get very distal um, to kind of, uh, allow you to see as much of that uh, distal femoral vein. And then the popliteal vein, everybody's got different ideas about the positioning of the patient, but I like this one. This is what our, our scanners use. Um, you can sit the patient on the edge of the bed. You can, um, you can do it with them uh, supine, prone. Um, hamstring tendons tend to get in the way. So, but uh, yeah, this, this, is a, this is a nice position. And then this is the popliteal vein uh, being compressed. And um, I think I have a just, the popliteal vein, the, fem, the popliteal vein is on top of the, or it's proximal, to, it's closer to the probe. So pop on top we use, if you're looking for the popliteal vein, it's easy to compress. So very often when you're looking at your, you can't find it, you're actually compressing it. So pop on top, if you remember that for popliteal vein. Um, so that's a nice popliteal vein. It's a small one, but it's it's compressing fully. And then color flow, again, not something I do as an emergency physician and not something that's recommended, but for what it's worth, uh, 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 this is what the sonographers save. They save an image of color in the, um, in the vein and, and save that to the system. This is one I do like though, it's a pulse wave. And particularly if you have, uh, where I would use this is if you've got somebody with a very swollen leg and you, you're compressing comoral femoral vein and there's no clot and you've compressed, you can't find a clot, but the leg is very swollen. This is where you might have a clot that's more, that's higher up, it's more proximal uh, in the iliac vein. Um, and and you just, you're just not seeing it in the femoral vein because it's higher up. And this is respiratory va variation. I'll just play the video for you if I can. So you can see, just at the bottom of the screen, you can see the flow direction as the patient is inspiring. Um, so the patient is taking deep breaths in and out, and you can see with respiratory variation, you can see the variation in the flow. Um, so it's actually, um, you know, it's it, it's going forwards and backwards depending on the um, intrathoracic pressure. So that's just the respiratory variation. So that is useful in that scenario. Wouldn't do it in every patient, but in just in that scenario. And just uh, uh, just of maybe of academic interest to, to some of you, something you wouldn't be doing in, in critical care patients, but something we do increasingly in emergency department patients is superficial vein uh, scanning. And because there is a there is an indication to treat uh, what used to be called thrombophlebitis, but we've moved away from that term now. We call it superficial vein thrombosis because occasionally it does migrate upwards and spread into the deep veins. Um, so and and uh, these patients come in; they're very sore, painful legs, and we scan their superficial veins. And you can scan if you've got a wide field of view, you can scan more than one vein at a superficial vein at a time, um, and you can grade the um, a length of it. If it's greater than five centimeters, we treat with the, we recommend treatment with the prophylactic dose. Um, or if it's proximal to, if it's abutting the saphenofemoral junction or, or um, popliteal, the junction with the popliteal vein, and the, we, 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 we treat uh, with a therapeutic dose. And there's a, there's a bit of clot in the superficial, uh, one of the superficial veins. And this slide just demonstrates um, clot in a superficial vein and, and the, the technique of uh, keeping your probe on the vein and moving down through the vein, which is, is, what, is, what, what is, is, is the trick really in, um, in compression ultrasound when you're, when you're scanning the femoral vein and scanning down every two centimeters. And it's a nice movement, a uh, nice quick movement. Um, and it's a, it's a technical skill that takes, takes a while to adapt and you've got to keep your eye on the, uh, um, on the vein. And there's just uh, the, this particular is, is a clot in the long saphenous vein, medial knee. 
Um, so that's really it. Um, this uh, Michael had some fantastic images from Utah. We we don't have any um, that nice desert scenery, but what we do have is lots of big waves off the west coast of Ireland. This is off the coast of Sligo last month when there was a bit of a storm. And this is a guy surfing. He was dragged out by this guy here who I, I it looks like he's going to be swallowed up by that wave, but he's on he's on the outside. He, um, but this to me, when I saw this image and I thought about scanning down the femoral vein, it's 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 kind of a bit like that. It's like Point Carroll sound when you start like surfing, so it's really hard. But once you, when, there's no way I would ever be capable of doing this. By the way, um, this is world class surfing. But uh, you know, it's a skill of staying, uh, especially in DVT scanning, when you're trying to stay on that femoral vein and you're moving the probe down the leg and you're staying in that sweet sweet spot and you're keeping. You're keeping it going. You're keeping your eye focused. It's a, it's a dynamic skill. So um, that's a brief run through um, DVT scanning. I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you, Dr. Breslin, for elegant presentation. We have uh, one question from the audience. At what rate do we need to perform DVT scanning? At what? At what rate? I believe how frequent you need to repeat. Oh, to, to repeat. Yeah. Well, it, it depends on your um, clinical scanning. I mean, if you, if you, if you, if, if, if I presume when you're talking about repeating, you're talking about doing it in a symptomatic patient where you didn't find a DVT in the first scan. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so there are several, uh, there are algorithms for the emergency department and the, the Wells algorithm would suggest that if you have a high risk patient with uh, high clinical probability, high D-dimer, and you don't find a DVT on the initial scan that you repeat in five to seven days. And that was kind of uh, in that ASEP algorithm. Obviously, the, the studies on asymptomatic DVT in the ICU, they, they, those patients had twice week scanning, but that was, uh, that was in a different patient cohort. Uh, we have a second question. Why don't we scan for deep calf vein thrombosis? So the, it, we do, it depends your local protocol. A lot of radiology vascular departments do whole leg ultrasound, do scan calf veins. Most don't, most just scan to the trifurcation. And the reason for that is there isn't an international consensus on whether it's worthwhile treating these calf vein DVTs or whether they'll, the calf vein or distal, distal DVTs have a much lower incidence of propagation to, uh, proximal DVT and PE. A small percentage do, but they, they feeling the feeling, the suggestion is about 80% of caffeine DVTs will resolve spontaneously, 20% will propagate proximally. But if they're going to do that, if that's going to happen, it's usually going to happen within about a week. And that's hence the recommendation for the repeat scan in a week. Um, but there are some places that do it. And um, again, it's a question of how far you want to look, how aggressive you want to be. Uh, we have a final question about how much compression should you exert? So, uh, yeah, so it, it, dep it, it depends on the patient's uh, body mass index to some degree and musculature to some degree. But it's really just until you um, see the, if you see the artery, you start, you're starting to compress the artery, then you know that if there's <clears throat> no DVT, the, the vein should be compressing at that level of pressure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I will leave to Dr. Asher.